Uh, hey, Juno. Okay. Bye, <laughs> uh, Juno. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is the May 5th of the Leak Code. May 5th? This is the fifth day of August Leak Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem. So, yeah, so that I had to edit it, but hopefully you enjoy seeing the doggo. Uh, I don't know why this isn't loading. Stone game seems like pretty straightforward. But yeah, so I usually stop these lives, so if it's a little bit slow, um, you know, fast forward, whatever you need to do, um, because, you know, just get to whatever's important to you. I'm refreshing right now, so we'll see. Um, yeah, Juno needs to sleep, so I don't know how that works. Okay, anyway, today's problem is stone game. So Alex and E plays a game, uh, even number powers in the world, has a power, object most stones. The total, the total number of stones is odd, so... There are no ties. Okay, take turns. Each turn they take a pass from the beginning or the end of the world. Okay. Oh, okay. So basically, Alex can take the top and the beginning and the end. Um, so th there's a straightforward dynamic programming one that I would do for this one. I'm trying to think whether I could be smarter, but but yeah, but the the kind of you know. One one thing that I would say about dynamic programming is that it is often, um, not often, depend. It's, it's often like a clever way to doing brute force. Uh, and what I mean by that is just that you're trying everything, but you're doing everything in a way that, um, that tries every possibility. And but in a way that you reuse states. And what that means is that basically you do because you're doing something again. You can save it up so that you don't recalculate it for the next time, right? Um, and and because of that, uh, I think this one, there's a very innate brute force algorithm with respect to, okay, for example, the first person, Alex, can only take, I mean, it has two moves, right? Beginning or the end. Lee, beginning, the end. And so forth, blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of get the score that way. Um, yeah. And, you know, with a naive algorithm, you may write something like um, best score. Uh, let's just say best score. Um, you know, maybe you have a pile that's that's you know, um you remove the beginning or the end, but no, notice that if you had something like this, uh, because this is a new current pile, um, which is different from this one, say, but notice that this this input it's always going to be a sub array of the original input, right? And what I mean by that, that means that this is always going to be some sub array, so it's going to be either a left pointer and a right pointer. So from that. You can what what is commonly done is that because of that you can actually just keep track of you know because how do you represent a subway right from a beginning pointer and a uh, and an ending pointer so that's so we can set that up by yeah by just keeping track of the left and right and in this case we want to be explicit because if you don't that's where mistakes happen so left right is inclusive of the numbers of the piles that we consider and in that case yeah and let's say if there's one power left that, that that would be our base case if there's one power left and in this case we actually want to get oh actually we want to see whether Alex wins or Lee wins okay so if the first point so we so there are a couple of things that is game theory and kind of tricky uh, or at least like I don't know if it's easy to make an observation on. Um, for me, I know these things because of experience and I've done game three problems and so forth. But the idea about this is I will look up a couple of things. The, the big one is minimax, meaning that you're minimizing the other person's score while maximizing your score. Um, and in this case, this is a symmetric game, meaning that given a, a, given a state, your moves... Um, uh, your moves are the same as their moves. Otherwise, you can imagine this is like maybe Alex score, and this, and then you, you there's another function that's like Lee score or something like that. But in this case, you can use one function, one function, because it's a symmetric game. So okay, so that, now there's one score left. What is the score here, right? Our best score is just powers of left because that's all we have left. Um, and then if that is not the case, then what happens? Well, this current person can either take the left or the right. So in a way, like I said, it's going to be brute force and then you just calculate the score. So best is equal to... Hmm. 
let's just say you go to negative infinity, and we could set infinity to various things, but let's just say, uh, what was it? For, I know that people give me comments about what I should use for infinity, so let's play around this one for today. But yeah, and then now we tick left, right? Well, what does that mean? Does that, so uh, when we tick the left, it means that, well, we take the best score of left plus one right because now this is the 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 sub array that we're using except for that this is now the other person's turn so you and your score um you know you're trying to maximize in this particular case um you're trying to maximize the difference between your your score and their score and that in a greedy kind of way. So in that case, this is going to be power sub left, which is the score that you just got, minus the score that, the best score that your opponent can have. Um, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit tricky. This minimax, I definitely recommend, if you're interested in this, reading, reading up on minimax um, in game theory. Um, that said, these things are, uh, at least in America, uh, really in, in, in interviews, so yeah. Um, anyway, so this is where we take right. Um, this also follows the same logic of okay. Now your array shrink by one, which is the one on the right, right. And then now at the very end, we can return best. Of course, I didn't do any memorization. Don't worry, we'll get to it. But but yeah. So because there are no ties, Alex can win if Alex has more stone than Lee. So how do you represent that? Well, Alex has more stone than Lee if if best score of 0 and minus 1, if this is greater than 0, because what does that mean if this is greater than 0? This is greater than 0 if, um, yeah, if the current person has a positive delta, that means it has more score. So in this case, we return true because the first person wins. Otherwise, we return false. And there's no tie, so we don't have to check for it. Um, a fun thing to know in this particular type of problem, or this particular problem anyway, is that the total number is sum of piles, right, of stones. So from this math, you know that uh, Alex score plus Lee score is equal to total. So you can kind of back out, um, and then Alex minus Lee is equal to this thing that we have, which we'll just put as delta. Um, so this is not actually relevant to solving this particular problem. It's just kind of giving you an example. And then if you add them two together, you have um, this thing, right? So basically, and so from here, this is just how you, if you face a problem where you need to score, this is Alex's best score. Um, yeah. Anyway, so of, so as we said, um, let's let's memorize this because well what is left and what is right uh left can be z oops left can be zero to n right can be also zero to n but roughly speaking left to n but we can generalize it to zero to n just for lazy complex analysis so they're all n square total inputs right um and for each input we do all of one work assuming that we memorize so all of one work per input so total time complexity will be over of n squared. And total space complexity will also be O of n squared because we have all this thing, O of one space per input. Um, yeah, otherwise this is exponential because you're doing two moves on every recursion and there's just a lot of recursions. So here, then let's set up the recursion. So here, the way that I like to do it, and you might see other things, is that I just like to be explicit about it. Uh, let's also just be consistent about the casing. Uh, times n, and this is, yeah, it doesn't really matter because we have two things. So in this case, yeah, if left is equal to right, we turn powers. Otherwise, we check whether this is cached. If this is cached, we turn cache. Otherwise, we do the expensive calculation of recursion. And then at the very end, we set up the cache, right? Um, oops. Uh, now let's test. I think I use very often. No, oh, well, there's only one test. That's weird. Uh, this is kind of a tricky thing to to verify as well. 
because as you can tell, um, because this has the worst combination of this is a boolean answer and they only give you one example. So eh, maybe from that, I'm a little bit not confident. Oh, some must be odd. I didn't really do the math. Uh, this is six and this is four, say it should be okay. Um, yeah, right. So, okay, I don't know. I'm a little bit lazy today, so I'm just going to give it a submit. But I, I would also advocate just writing more test cases and so forth. And this is good, accepted, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I think the part that people get, I get questions a lot with respect to these kind of game theory problems is that why do you do the subtraction here? Um, I think the ad, adding the score makes sense. The subtraction is trying to, because you're trying to minimize this um, the opponent's score, but but it, it may not be a sufficient explanation. So I definitely recommend reading up on minimax and game theory. Um, the the principles there kind of make sense there. Uh, in terms of caching, um, yeah, I think this is good. Um, I think this is actually a, so this is top down that uh memorization, but I definitely advocate practicing the bottom sub dynamic programming as well because especially in this case it's not as trivial to figuring out the order to do this in um so it'll be a good exercise for you and i and yeah um okay that's all i have for this farm uh i'll see you out tomorrow stay good stay healthy to good mental health i'll see you later bye bye